Once yes. upon a time, there was a the little boy. The story of Too Slim, Once Upon a Time, sitting in a crib in Grand Rapids, Michigan, gazing up at the only little mobile that his parents could afford, and it was a picture of Roy Rogers. And that little image was imprinted on my brain, and I knew someday I could grow up to be like the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers, my idol. And sure enough, I watched Buck Berry on the TV and learned some Western songs and eventually moved to Nashville, and I was heading my own trail ride my own little herd of beef down the trail, and I found that if I combined it with a couple other fellers, why, I could have a big herd of beef and take it to market and sell it for the big money. And that's when I met Ranger Doug, Deputy Doug in those days, and Woody Paul, the king of the cowboy fiddlers, or the prince of the cowboy fiddlers, as he was known in those days. And we started singing together, and, well, the rest is history. I don't know how we could say it any better, Biff. That's the story of Riders in the Sky. August of 1978, we took the herd down the road to the Kentucky State Fair, brought good beef to hungry people. Been on there ever since, 2,092 dates as we speak today. 2,092 dates. Mm -hmm. You keep track of them. I do indeed, yes. You are the archivist, Ranger I Doug. am the archivist. Odometer. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> Being the, the idol of American youth. Uh... Well, I wasn't the idol of too many then, but of course, uh, <laughs> when after I became Ranger Doug, I did become the idol of American youth, taking over the crown from the heroes of the past. Uh, a typical day was uh, us just doing what we generally did and then coming over to my living room at night and practicing these old songs and working up some new ones that we'd written. Right you are. At the time I was uh, uh, working at a galvanizing factory, galvanizing here in Nashville and trying to be a songwriter and playing bass with Dickie Lee uh, at part of the time and uh, was uh, just trying to make a living as a musician, as so many people do. And I got tired of galvanizing metal because I knew that I could go out and galvanize an audience. So uh, <laughs> I worked together. Sometimes you played them pretty heavy. <laughs> I do. I, I lay it on a little thick. I'm the first to admit that. But we all had different jobs, and, and gradually Riders in the Sky kind of took precedent. I believe Woody was gainfully employed as a, a Volkswagen repairman. That's right. I did body work in my backyard. Body work in the backyard. Shade I still do body work, but not on Volkswagens. No oh, <laughs> okay. How did you become the master of the fiddle, Woody Paul? Well, um, I I had to get a you know it takes a many many years of hard training. As a matter of fact, I went to Vanderbilt for four years, and then I went to MIT for four and a half years, and got a PhD in physics, which I applied then to the violin, and and uh, it's not you know we're a lot we're a lot. A lot more intelligent than we act. <laughs> <laughs> but but was that uh, the uh, the fiddle, the violin? Did you have training as a violinist or a fiddle? Actually, player? I'm entirely self-taught. Are you? Man? Yep, never had a lesson. Never had a lesson. <laughs> Certainly <laughs> <Okay>, good. <laughs> but you uh, you uh, have roots in the Grand Ole Opry, don't you, Woody? Roots. <laughs> Roots, <laughs> I don't know. I grew up around here. I grew up in Triune, Tennessee, um, about 25 miles south in the Grand Ole Opry, and, and uh, listened to it all the time. My early heroes were all the Grand Ole Opry stars from listening to it on the radio out in Triune. And I would come into town every weekend when I got to be about 12 or 13 with Sam and Kirk McGee. Is that right? And hang out backstage at the Opry. So I kind of grew up with the Grand Ole Opry. We wanted to sing. We wanted to sing cowboy music. We wanted right. to sing old time cowboy music. It was it was beautiful, interesting music, and we were all a little uh, uh, a little burned out, if I can say that, on on contemporary country music at that time. This was in the late seventies, and and we were interested in a more traditional uh, acoustic kind of sound, and a, and we were interested in the images of the old west that we'd grown up with, and that that spoke to us, uh, uh, that meant a lot to us emotionally as well as intellectually. And uh, we, we were interested in playing that kind of music. It was interesting and remains interesting uh, uh, to the musician in us and uh, as, well as, the, as well as the poet in us, I would think. The images of the wide open spaces, the images mm -hmm. of the mountains on the horizon, uh, the free life, the working cowboy, uh, uh, the good guys. Uh, where where there's a there's a there's a clear right and a clear wrong. It's not how it is, you know, in real life. But it's uh, it's fun to play in that uh, in that kind of uh, uh, philosophical sandbox.
Ranger Doug played in a, a, <laughs> a, a, a historical sandbox for a while. Uh, yeah, I was down there in the historical sandbox and had a wonderful time uh, learning a lot about the history of the West and Western music and country music of the of the er golden age. And uh, certainly, it's it's always been an interest of mine ever since I was a kid, and and uh, gave me the opportunity to learn a lot more about cowboy music and the great performers like Jimmy Wakeley and Eddie Dean and all the sons of the pioneers and people like that who had a lot to offer. And I got to I got to play around in that and learn a bunch of it. And I like to think I put some of it to good use. A lot of stuff buried in that old sandbox. There are, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we could talk about records or the TV show or the radio show. Well, you know, Biff, uh, we, we couldn't have made it this far without some of our great sponsors, including uh, Deadwood Darlene's Prairie Lubricants. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we could have a word now from Deadwood Darlene. That's a good idea. Friends, with all this chilly weather caused your herd to be troubled by chafing and galling. Have they sold up in a corner of the corral and become cantankerous over little things that just didn't seem to matter before? Well, what you may need is Deadwood Darlene's new utter butter on a rope. Slim, why don't you tell the folks about it? I'd be glad to, Woody. You see, you merely tack utter butter on a rope to a pole in the center of your pen, suspend the business end about 15 inches off the ground, and wait for the doggies to discover it. Within seconds, its soothing, calming action goes to work, relieving discomfort and, of course, stress. Yup, utter butter on a rope. It changes... <laughs> Two. Ah. Yes, that's Deadwood Darlene's new utter butter on a rope, a division of Darlene's Lubricants, the official lubricants of TNNR. And now, back to Biff Colley. <laughs> okay. We've always been a, a working cowboy band, Biff. We've done 200, 200 shows a year since about the get-go, haven't we, Ranger Doug? Sure has. We, and we, we've always been, uh, it's always been a word-of-mouth kind of experience. We've done uh, everything we've done pretty much without a hit record. Uh, we were on a small label for made seven albums, and then we, we've been on MCA for the last three albums. In fact, we're just working on the fourth one right now for them. But it's generally it's been a word-of-mouth thing. People see us and they can't believe it. There's grown men up there in big hats behaving this way and, and singing this sweet Western music. So they, want, <laughs> they tell their friends about it and they bring their kids and that's sort of how it's evolved. It's really been fun. It hasn't, as I've often said, it hasn't been a rocket to the top. It's been more like a hot air balloon, just sort of slowly <laughs> gaining altitude every year is a little bit better. It's until, really fun. Until finally we could appear on Audio Biography, well, the story <laughs> of Riders in the Sky. Kind of a career highlight for me. I know yeah, that. I'm yes, ready sir. to pack it in after this. What about the Opry? Remember your first Riders in the Sky's first appearance on the Grand Ole Opry? The first appearance, sure, I remember it. Uh, it was nineteen seventy-eight, wasn't it? Seventy-nine, I believe. Seventy-nine. Yeah. It was. It was early. We guested on there about twenty-five times, and they finally asked us to be members. We joined in June nineteenth, nineteen eighty-two. Right. What's, what's more interesting is the first disappearance oh, on really? the Grand Ole Opry. You know, like when two of us are there, and where's the other guy? He was here a while ago. Yeah. There's some very interesting little stories about that. Well, let's hear one of them, Woody. Yeah, let's hear one. <laughs> well, uh, I remember uh, uh, one time, wasn't too long ago, what was the last one that Ranger Doug didn't make? He happened to be out in the park with his I children. What? He was out in the park, and he, he <laughs> missed his wake-up call. He was taking care of the stock. Well, the stock comes first. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. But well, we were introduced on the Opry by the great Ernest Tubb. It was, uh, of course, late in his life, and it was a real thrill. I still have the tape of him introducing us on the Opry as, as members for the first time. June 19, 1982. What a thrill. The Texas Troubadour. Uh, about a year and a half now. Year and a half. Writers Radio Theater, yes. It was done for a year out of Nashville, and it's in reruns as we speak. The uh, new shows we're taping at WVXU in Cincinnati, and they will be on the air very shortly. What? Over 100 stations across America, Canada, and even Australia. Uh, Armed Forces Radio is going to be carrying it. It will be heard around the world. It's really fun. What? Sort of a Melody Ranch meets Monty Python deal. Yeah, exactly. With a little prairie home sensibility then in there. And, of course, our homage to our hero, Biff Colley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as, as frequently the, as the we... Biff Colley corner every, yeah. every yeah. week. Yeah, right. Colley's corner. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little trumpet solo. In yeah. It. yeah, that's <laughs> it. They did it. <laughs> <laughs> And now you got me confused completely. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we do to ourselves yeah. on, yeah. on the show. That's what you're yeah. Right. Writers Radio Theater. It's like, it's a it's really fun to do. It's fun to write it. It's a it's a pretty carefully scripted show. 
How do you plan it? Do you sit down together and say, let's see, what are we going to do first? Yeah, that's exactly what we do. We have, we've evolved a format sort of in the first year, and now we're just kind of poking holes in the format and having fun with that. And uh, we have guests on. We just had Marty Stewart on, and we have uh, all different uh, kinds of acoustic musicians. Garth Brooks is on it. I had a bunch of big people. Uh, National Mary Bluegrass Chippen Band and Allison Krauss, I think. Well, we don't want to forget back in 1983 when the Nashville Network went on. We had a show on there for about three and a half years called Tumbleweed Theater. Did three years of episodes and another year, a year and a half of reruns. Of, uh, and that was a lot of fun. We did 70, what was it, 78 or 76 shows. Uh, I don't remember, Ranger Doug, but it was a, it was a movie show, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it was a, it was a two-hour show, and we, or it was an hour and a half. I can't remember these things. Anyway, we showed a movie, and in between all the commercials for Christy Lane eight-track tapes, why we had to... A big deal about, uh, we'd introduce the movie, talk about the, the star, and uh, do little skits. And that's where a lot of the characters that we first developed there are the characters who are such superstars today over Riders Radio Theater. People like Side Meat, the old camp cook. Maybe Side Meat to come up and say a word for us. Here. Hey, Side Meat. Hey, Ranger Doug. What are you cooking today? Well, I'm here to talk about the history of Riders in the Sky here on Audio Biography. Oh, when did you, uh, Audio Biography? Well, whatever you're talking about. When, when did you, when did you, uh, Join up with us. The folks might know and where well, you came uh, from. Uh, you know, I ain't too good with my reading and writing, so I don't remember the exact date. But I believe it was about 10 years ago. And mm -hmm. the boys, uh, Biff, the boys needed a cook. Moosh. They were mighty, I'll tell you, too slim was way slim. Moosh, too slim for me. So I hired on as a cook, and I've been treating them mighty fine ever since, cooking them biscuits and beans and going along with them wherever they go, up and down the trail. You know, Biff, this is the only act that actually takes a herd of longhorn beef with them to every concert appearance that they make. You don't find Clint Black doing that. No, my no. golly. Well, the overhead is going to eat you boys alive. <laughs> but I, I know that you love to have the little steers out there with you. Now, you come from a long line of sidekicks, don't you? Yes. I do. I uh, pay homage to a Smiley Burnett and, uh, and uh, uh, Fuzzy St. John and, mm -hmm. and probably the greatest sidekick of them all, the old Gabaroo, Gabby Hayes. Ma, He's the one where I learned to go, Ma. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's see? the cry of the sidekick. I thought you were just talking <coughs> into the microphone. No, there. no, that's a Ma. That's the sound the sidekick makes in all the old westerns. At some point in every old western, the sidekick will go, Ma. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't but, know why. But they'll do it. Are you really related to Sir Francis Bacon? Hey, he very distantly. Yes, I am. <laughs> One of the historical meats. One of the old meats, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there's USDA meat, the great government uh, yeah, hero, lunch. war hero. Lunch meat. Well, he uh, he works for the school system now. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of, we don't talk about him. Mystery meat, the great sleuth. Uh, detective, yeah. <laughs> But it's been a pleasure, and I'll tell you anything you want to know about these boys, I'll be glad to tell you. Side Meat knows the inside story. He's seen it all from the back of the wagon. More in the back of the herd, and more. Side Meat, give me a historical background on Woody Paul. Uh, Woody Paul seem, seems a little bashful. Well, Woody Paul is a shy type. By golly, you got to draw him out <laughs> and then quarter him. Oh, no, no. You got to know what he is to appreciate him, and I'm frankly, I'm still knowing him. <laughs> no, no, Woody is a, is a lad from Triune, Tennessee, uh, very close here to Nashville, yeah. and he his roots are at the Grand Ole Opry, I believe. He learned to play fiddle and banjo. His father's quite a well-known banjo player out in Triune way, and Woody, Woody is Ranger Doug's a banjo lover. And, uh, <laughs> That was a little <laughs> commenter. But uh, Woody was raised around music and country music. And he Woody is one of those guys that uh, if he can pick it up and play it. You know, I'm talking about a stringed instrument now. He can pick it up and play it, and it makes me sick, you know? Because I can play the harmonica and play Polly Wally Doodle, and by God, I'll go against any sidekick <laughs> when it comes to Polly Wally Doodle. But Woody will pick up a mandolin, a banjo, a guitar, a fiddle, anything, and if I golly, you give him about seven weeks to practice, and he'll play something really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and, but good. then he went, he had to be educated. Roy Acuff, uh, give him a fiddle uh, when he was uh, graduating from high school. Hmm. And Roy said, uh, uh, go to school. He <laughs> says, I've heard you fiddle. Go to school. <laughs> no, no, no. So Woody, Woody went to school, and when he was done with school, he came back to Nashville and became Woody Paul. Very good. So, be, I mean, what yeah, do you thank think, you. Woody, is that a pretty accurate description of your uh, background? Well, yeah, absolutely. 
That was a good job, side meat. Well, thank you, what do you do? <laughs> make him the official spokesman of the group. He's yeah. doing so well here today. <laughs> and I'll be glad to. I'll tell the story about you if you want. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> sure, go ahead. Ranger Doug. Yes, sir. The all millions of American youth mm -hmm. are uh, enamored of your style. Well, not to mention the looks. housewives. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's another story. Yeah, yeah it's it's another for story. another show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Autobiography after midnight. Yes. <laughs> the true story of Ranger Doug. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Tell us the true story of Ranger Doug, the idol of American youth, would you? Uh, I don't know. I'd almost rather have Side Meat do it. He's doing such a good... I'm interested to hear what he'll have to say. Yeah. Go ahead, Side Meat. Well, all right. Go uh, in. The Ranger Doug was born in Great Lakes Naval Station, uh, the son of a Navy doctor. Aye, aye. Uh, several years ago. Boo. A and few. A few. And uh, Ranger Doug grew up in different places around the country. And uh, in his formative years, he was in Southern California listening to Sheriff John on the TV who was a big local uh, country western celebrity in those days. I see. And Ranger Doug, had, sure yeah, yeah. Ranger Doug had run home and drink his milk and, and uh, put on his badge. Put another with, candle on the birthday cake. He's you know, putting another <laughs> candle on the birthday cake. Boy, there's been a few, haven't there? Oh, Whoa, the last one looked like a bonfire. And uh, then Ranger Doug went to uh, Michigan and uh, became highly educated there at the fine university they have in Ann Arbor, probably the finest university in the world. <laughs> and then he came down to Nashville and went to work for your Hall of Fame. And uh, But he had a burning desire, Biff. He was happy as Deputy Doug, but he had a burning desire to be a hillbilly superstar. <laughs> he had a desire to strap on that guitar and get on the Grand Ole Opry. And by golly, that's what he's done. So it's a lesson to all the little buckaroos and buckarettes out there that if you have a dream, Dream, just stand there and do it, and pretty soon someone will pay you five or ten bucks to hear it again. Oh, <laughs> this is that beautiful yodeling. Yeah. Yeah. Side so, meet. Do you have any yeah. other friends that uh, travel with the, the Riders in the Skies entourage? Well, there's a, there's a whole raft of them that are liable to show up, depending on the area of the country that the boys are in. But uh, yeah, we have two jaws. Uh, we actually have a dead horse that. Uh, Should we get coming. two jaws up here? Well, I don't see why not. Uh, is he here? He is. Uh, you you saw two jaws. I know you're a fan of the old movies, Biff. He appeared yes. in over two thousand. He uh, really he, from silence up to uh, up to early TV. He died yeah. in nineteen fifty three or four, and he's been retired in Death Valley <laughs> ever since. He's yeah. kind of on a comeback tour. Uh, yeah. Two jaws. Yeah. Come on, come on in. The fourth or fifth smartest horse in the movies is what he was known as. <laughs> Thanks very much, Ranger Doug. Great to be here, Biff. How are things down in Death Valley, Two Jaws? Slow. Real slow. Uh -huh. Not this slow, <laughs> but real slow. It's great to be here on audio biography. It's because I can actually end mine. I have the, I have the complete autobiography uh -huh. right up through my death and all. A lot mm -hmm. of the stars can't say that. You're, well, you're one of the few dead stars still working. Yeah. Well, I actually am working. I'm back on the comeback trail mm -hmm. with Riders in the Sky, uh, pressing the flesh uh -huh. out there just like... Back in my heyday, my heyday. See, this is a dead horse here, folks. This is kind you, you of a visual. It's a visual thing. You haven't come back not, as a comedian, I can no, tell. Though. Right. Yeah, tough to come back and die again on <laughs> TNNR. Well, one thing everybody wants yeah. to know about Hollywood in the old days and all the great animal stars is yeah. is the wildlife. Is it, oh, is it true? Was it that wild? Life in the fast trail. Unbelievable, man. Uh -huh. I spent my share of time at the Betty Ford Clinic. Really? <laughs> the studio sent me there to dry out. Uh, well, they did a great job Thank by, you so by much. the looks of you. That's about well, this as was dry. Before, this was before Just Say Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. So, Two Jaws goes with us, you know, almost everywhere we go. Yeah. He's got a little flight case. We can just pack him up. Doesn't I'll tell you one of the guys that, that I love to see is Sergeant Dudley, uh, the great Mountie that comes along with us, uh, Biff. Um, Sergeant, I wonder if he's here. Is it Sergeant Dudley here? I'm always here. I've come to get my man, eh? Wow, it's Sergeant <laughs> Dudley of the RCMP. Welcome yes, I to, am. Welcome to our country, Sergeant Dudley. Thank you. Proud to be here. As you know, I'm distantly related to Ranger Doug. You are his Canadian cousin. I am indeed, and I'm down here in a foreign exchange tour, eh? Well, I, we had to increase the Canadian content of TNNR. That's and, right. And this is a real thrill to have you on the show. It's a thrill to be here. I hated to leave little Nell and my horse together, but still, I come to come your way. Well, I, I'm... To show you the Canadian way, eh? Is that the easy way? <laughs> it's never been. <laughs> ah, 
<laughs> Sergeant Dudley, give us a little bit about Canadian folklore. What do you do to spend the time uh, up there in the great frozen north? Well, uh, after we're through curling, which is the national sport of Canada, of course, we often get into beaver flipping. Really? In fact, I competed in the Olympics as a beaver flipper for the Dominion of Canada. The beaver flip, you say? <laughs> That's right. It, uh, how does the sport uh, proceed? Well, it's, it's an unusual sport. You simply jump in the canoe, uh, paddle across a pond to the punt. Yes, the That's punt. The, the playing field, of course. I you, see. You take the beaver by the tail, flip him for distance, really? pound back a case of labats in for a timed event, and then paddle or weave your way back across the pond to the finish line, eh? <laughs> but it's not a real beaver. Surely it's a little plastic thing. Oh, like no, that would be the easy way, but it wouldn't be the mounty way, uh, eh? I <laughs> thought so. Well, we'll be on the lookout for the beaver flip. That's right. It's about 6.30 in the morning. You can't miss it. Next Olympics, eh? <laughs> well, I must go. Well, <laughs> Commander Fenwick calls. <laughs> so long. <laughs> Sergeant uh, He's a case. Sarge, he's dandy. That red coat, but... Knock your eyes out. Boy, he's something, isn't he? <laughs> what a grin. Yeah. Yeah. Like but we also have a, uh, an aspiring country singer who, uh, this is, I understand, going to be his first appearance on the major He's media. been aspiring since about 1954, hasn't he? He certainly has. <laughs> uh, how about a big hand for Drywall Paul? Let's bring him in. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. <laughs> right there with you. Great to see you, So listen, uh, Biff, are you Mr. Collie? Yes, sir. I'm mighty pleased to meet you, Mr. Collie. You know, I, I got a little... Uh, Got a new little single here. I thought maybe you might be interested. In, you can't uh, come on and bring your own record. Well, this is Writers you, in the Skies autobiography. You can't. Well, I just thought that Mr. Colley might, might might like to have it just to take with him. You well, know, what uh, label is it on? Oh, it's on the Skillsaw label. The mm-hmm. Skillsaw <laughs> label. This 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 is your own. I'm guessing you, this is your own label. Oh Would no, you? no, no! It's, it's a big outfit. This is, this is my first record in quite a few years. It's it's called uh, "You Broke My Heart." Now my suits don't fit. Well, I. <laughs> Nice title. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be a big one for me. Is that flip side? Sometimes the flip side is the big hit. Uh, uh, you know, that remodel home, remodel hearts. So flip side. <laughs> oh, I look. Both well, sides are real good. I'd like to. I'd like to hear that. Uh, maybe we could talk to your manager. I know he's. Uh, you have a manager, at, Drywall. Yeah. Oh yeah, I certainly do. Yeah. He works at the donut along. shop. Got a nice he? pet cat. <laughs> <laughs> I like that little kitty cat he has all the time. Meow. Meow. Drinks a lot of milk, though. <laughs> <laughs> Do a little bit of your song here, Drywall. Let's hear uh, we Oh, don't... you know, just, just a little. I remodel my home. Dun, dun, dun. I remodel my heart. Dun, 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 dun. Of course, I have to have my band with me. You, know, but, you, but, you have a band? I fired them. Go something like there's that, a, though. There's a, there's a bunch of bad guys. One of them, when oh. I was in the things y'all not to bet into, I couldn't handle it. No kidding. Yeah. Wouldn't wear a hat on stage, you know. Oh, well, you wow. got to wear a hat. Oh, I know you do. Yeah. You got to wear a hat. The only way. <laughs> you boys all wear hats, and, you know, that's just, you got to wear a hat or you ain't got a band. That's all there is to it. Well, that's, that's right. Beautiful. I mean, look at them. Clint Black. I mean, how many of those guys you see don't wear a hat, you know? Mm-hmm. Ricky Van hat. Shelton. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. right. A hat they all wear a hat. Straight. Ernest Tubb. Ernest Tubb. Tub. Ernest Tubb. Everybody's a success wears hats. I got a great band. Snow. Bigger. Well, that's a toupee, but it's... <laughs> but it's <laughs> Still, he wears still a hat every, every day. But it's like a hat. <laughs> he used to wear a hat, you know, before he wore a toupee. Mm-hmm. I know it. Mm-hmm. See? And a fine hat, too. And a fine, fine toupee. And, 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 yeah, and a fine career. <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, Drywall, it's been wonderful having you here, and we'd like to play your record, but gosh, it looks like we're about out of time for your section of the show. Well, it's a likely story. <laughs> I always dry, hear that all the time. Drywall Paul. Yeah. He's not bitter. He's he's been trying it for years, but at least he's not bitter. Admires no. perspicacity. You you're a songwriter yourself, Biff. Have you ever dreamed of uh, titles like Remodeled Home, Remodeled Heart? No, I wrote one called uh, You Broke My Heart When You Went Away and I Won't Break Your Jaw When You Come Back. <laughs> <laughs> you might pitch it to Drywall. It <laughs> might be a good idea. Yeah. I think he, he, he could do justice to yeah. it. Let me call you sweetheart, darling. I've called you everything else. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought up the songwriting, Biff. I think that uh, one of the things that has set writers in the par- writers in the pie a start. <laughs> well, it sky. wouldn't be writers in the pie. Yeah, that, in the that, sky. W- that wouldn't be a name for a band at all. Writers in the sky, the name of which came from an old Sons of the Pioneers album, by the way. 
uh, based on the great song, of course, Riders in the Sky. Mm -hmm. But we've always felt that the tradition of Western music could be advanced and, and furthered only with original new material. And so we've always, uh, uh, half of our albums have always been original that music. Right? And, uh, and that continues to be one of the, the strong focuses of the band. Because there's a million guys out there that can do the Sons of the Pioneers songbook and do them better than we can. But uh, they don't. Uh, what sets us apart is the show and, and the original music. Ranger Doug and Woody are, are kind of the poet lariats. Of the West. There he is. He Let's is. have one of the, their original songs. How about one of Ranger Doug's beautiful, heartfelt songs right here? Good. <clears throat> you mentioned the uh, origin of the name Riders in the Sky. Yeah. Have you ever paid homage to the author of that uh, original song, Stan? What was his name? Stan, Stan Jones. Jones. Stan Jones. Well, yeah. I don't know if we paid homage to him. We've recorded a couple of his tunes. We recorded homage. Cowpoke. <laughs> and, and a couple of bucks, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mrs. Jones would be real happy to have those. Mm -hmm. Do you do all have anybody in your group, in your entourage, that in, in the uh, business of publishing music and of producing movies and things? Do you have... Uh, we have, have all that. Larry Mammoth. Is, uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> Head of Mammoth Pictures, he's, he's uh -huh. sort of associated Mammoth with Mammoth Radio Pictures, mm -hmm. yeah. But we, uh, yeah, we have all the stuff that, that real guys have. We have a manager, and we have publicity, and we have people in L.A. who are putting together big deals. Uh -huh. So if the phone rings, I could very possibly be on a plane in 20 minutes and <laughs> going out to meet with Zanuck. Mm -hmm. Or Mike Douglas, whoever calls yeah. first. Possibly. Gosh, mm -hmm. do you think Mike Douglas might hear this show. He might listen to TNNR, yeah. This could be our big break, guys. Mm -hmm. Wow. Be witty. Quick. Oh, Say no, funny. not that. <laughs> We're in trouble. Fortunately, Woody's here. How you feel, Woody? Not very witty yeah. right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you turn yourself on? You guys are, kind of are personal great question, actors. Isn't it, you <laughs> portray uh, a lot of different things, including the, uh, the qualities of uh, old-time America. How do you turn yourself on when you don't feel like it and you've got to go, go on stage? Well, it's just a mark of professionalism, Biff. Just like kind of what you're doing right now. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're a professional, you know, it doesn't matter how you feel. You have to get out there and perform. Yeah. It'd be the easy way to get out there and say, you folks, y'all are crazy for coming in here and looking at this <laughs> crazy home. stuff. Go home. Spend what are you doing here? Yeah. You know, but you have to get out there and... You have to get out there and say, all human endeavor seems to pale in the, <laughs> in the face of this show by Riders in the Sky. And by golly, we're going to do it the cowboy way. What is the cowboy way? I always hear you guys say that, well, but I never... You never well, you want to give them the stock answer, Ranger mm -hmm. Doug? I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? That's my that's stock the, answer. Is that the signal for the stock answer? Here it is, the stock answer. No, I, a lot of different things I, to different people. That's it, it, right. It is. It's real true. Simple. But, you know, this is a difficult era we live in, an era of situation ethics and difficult choices yeah. caught between the Scylla and Charybdis of, of opposing things that uh, might pull a lesser man apart. And so you have to sometimes just, just stop and ask yourself, well, I'm stuck here. What would Gene or Roy or Tex or Ranger Doug do? And well, then you know that's the cowboy way. That's what I do. How does it feel Frequently. to have this kind of responsibility, Ranger Doug? It's rough, but I have all these good guys around me to support me, so it, I get through it somehow. Yeah, it's delegated, in other words. Mm -hmm. you, Sloughed off, even. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that wouldn't be the cowboy no, way. No, no. absolutely no. not. Well, previously <laughs> assigned. Yeah. So, at the end of the show. When you guys sing away into the sunset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when payday rolls around. Mm -hmm. Who, who uh, is in charge of your business activities? I'm too slim, and I take care of the mercantile. That's my part of the deal. I sell the T-shirts, the records, the tapes, the bandanas, the calendars. That We have the handy order form in case folks don't want to be seen leaving the writer's show carrying writer's merchandise. <laughs> Uh, we have pictures, and and we go out there and meet and greet the fans. We've always felt it was important to actually root with the Western fans out there in the lobby, and we've always done that since day one. Mm -hmm. What do we do if we want some things? We're not at the show. We're hearing about it on the air. Well, if you're say. hearing about it on the air, the thing to do is get out your pencil or a handy writing utensil. I've got one. All right, Ranger Doug, prepare to write. Two Slims Mercantile. Two Slims, Slims mercantile. mercantile, Post Office Box 277. Box 277. Whites Creek. Whites Creek, 
Tennessee. Is that with an apostrophe? That is actually without an apostrophe, interestingly enough. At okay. least the way they spell it at my post I'll, office. I'll take that off then. Tennessee. 37189. That would be 37189. Eight, and nine. That would be correct. Okay. So that's how the folks can find out about all the writers in this guy memorabilia. Everything from cacti's to calendars. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I want to write that down too. What no, don't it? worry about it, Woody. <laughs> don't worry about it. Your well, check's the in the mail. Two, I got the box 227 White's Creek, but what was the zip? Tennessee 37189. So anyway, that's my part of the operation. Too slim in charge of the mercantile. Ranger Doug, on the other hand, oh, I do you do, Ranger? Doug? What, what does Ranger <laughs> Doug do? Ranger Doug sort of coordinates, does all the public relations stuff for everything from all the Christmas cards that Slim doesn't get to most of the interviews and things, and sort of the the public figure and organizer for writers in the sky. And Woody Paul, Woody Paul keeps the van running. Uh, it keeps uh, it keeps us running down the road. Keeps That's what the PhD is good for, to understand about carburetors and injectors and stuff like that. And he's a happy man when he's dealing with a clogged injector, boy. Mm-hmm. And uh, and also the books. Woody Paul keeps the books. Be Riders on. Radio. Can we talk about a competing radio station on here? It's a public radio Pub- Public radio. Public, Pub- That's public, right. radio. public radio. Public radio. Yeah. In a class by itself. And that's where you'll find Riders Radio Theater. Why don't you be- tell the folks the format of the show, too, Slim? Well, let me tell them where they can find it here first, oh. Woody. It'd be down at the left-hand side of your FM dial, somewhere in the public radio ghetto that they keep down there. In the- what do you mean by that, uh- well, that's where generally your public radio stations are, down in the left end okay. of the of you the don't FM get much dial. Much above ninety one, and then suddenly it's all this weird music. But yeah. down there in the left hand part, that's you've got where you your go. Albanian pan flutes and mm-hmm. and, and riders in the sky mm-hmm. <laughs> down there. But and it's the cowboy way. Absolutely, right. it's a it's a half hour show of high yodeling adventure with the great border announcer, Texas Bix Bender, the voice that sold a million baby chicks. And we have writers in the sky, and we have uh, funny commercials, and lots of great music, and a, a searing, emotional melodrama mm, with yes. writers in the sky pitted against the evil Slocum. <laughs> All right. I was wondering when you'd get to me. What about my sidekick, Charlie? Yeah, boss. And somebody's <laughs> arm you want me to break? <laughs> <laughs> Not now, Charlie. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I can't wait. All right. See you next week on Riders Radio Theater. Sure, boss. <laughs> well, partners, look like this is the end of the trail. Doom, Thanks doom, for riding doom, with doom, us these past doom, two doom, hours doom, 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 while we've told our stories and sung our songs. Could just ride off in the sunset you. without saying goodbye, but it wouldn't be Until the cowboy we way. Meet again. Happy trails to you. How do you close Writer's Radio Theater? With our theme song. With our closing theme song. Every week we sing So Long Saddle Pals. So long, saddle pals. It's been so good to see you. Farewell, saddle pals. We really hate to leave you. But the doggies are lowing. Roundup time is nigh. A prairie moon is calling from a starry western sky. So farewell, saddle pals. Our parting brings us sorrow. On down the trail we'll find a bright tomorrow. Keep those faces smiling round your home corral. So until we meet again, goodbye, saddle Turn it off. <clears throat> Could we get you to say, all of you in, in unison, hi, we're Riders in the Sky, and welcome to our audio, audio bar. Oh, yeah, for openers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, each <clears throat> name? Yeah, yeah. So I'm Woody, and I'm Paul, and I'm... Okay. Yeah, and we're Riders and in the Sky, and welcome to our audio bar. Okay. okay. Mighty fine and a great big western howdy. I'm Ranger Doug. I'm Too Slim. And I'm Woody Paul. We're, We're riders, riders in the, the sky. sky. And welcome to our audio biography. Yee-yee. Okay, could we get uh, one of those where I'm, I'm Too Slim and I'm... You yeah, want to go around. Mm. I'm Biff, I'm Jack, this I'm This is Pete. our audio biography. This is our audio okay. biography. Okay.
Fib Jack and Pete. Let me give y'all an example. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Howdy, y'all. I'm Woody Paul with Riders in the Sky, and this is our autobiography. Audio. Is that what you wanted? Yeah. See, I understood what he wanted, yeah. sir. Audio bottom. Okay. Uh, that's what the degree comes in for. That's okay. it. We'll try it again, then, and say the word right. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. I'm Woody Paul with Riders in the Sky, and this is our audio biography. Okay. Oh, do, do, do. Howdy there, saddle pals. This is Ranger Doug with Riders in the Sky, and this is our audio biography. Oh, this is Side Meat with Riders in the Sky, and this is our audio biographer, Murphy. Oh, Howdy, Saddle Pals. This is Too Slim with Riders in the Sky. This is our audio biography. Great. Good? Okay. All right. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Some man. fun. Thanks.